Michael Jordan is suing NASCAR. Well, 2311 Racing and Front Row Motorsports are suing NASCAR in a lawsuit filed on Wednesday morning. Let's talk about it. Welcome back to Break Hard. I'm Matt. Somebody call the Baja men because Michael Jordan, 2311 Racing, Front Row Motorsports, there was a dog's out on Wednesday. Well, specifically one dog, that being Jeffrey Kessler, the nation's top antitrust lawyer, when the two teams announced jointly on Wednesday morning that they have filed a lawsuit against NASCAR uh, for antitrust violations. To quote Heath Ledger in The Dark Knight, here we go. This is going to start a storm in a sense. I'm not sure where this ends. I don't know what the outcome is going to be from this. I don't know if 2311 Racing is going to get, in front row motorsports, going to get what they want out of this, but their lawyer, Jeffrey Kessler, is very bullish on their chances of winning or at least settling to get what those teams would like out of this negotiating period. NASCAR has not responded. Don't expect NASCAR to respond. Um, Maybe not for a while. Maybe they'll put out a generic corporate release, but I do not expect them to respond in the way that uh, 2311 Front Row and Jeffrey Kessler have responded on Wednesday. In the meantime, I'm just going to sit back with my tea and continue to sip on it and watch all of the chaos that is unfolding here. These are one of those, you know, like when you buy a set of, uh, uh, of dinnerware, they give you coffee cups. I don't drink coffee. I don't drink caffeine either, which might be weird to some people, but these have never been used. They just sit in my cabinet um, on the top shelf and collect dust. That is very dusty, actually. Now my hands are dusty. What happened on Wednesday, though, is a pivotal moment, honestly, in NASCAR history. It's something that we thought might happen, and it did. And now we have to see what the outcome of this is going to be. The opening line of the lawsuit states, this case is about the unlawful monopolization of premier stock car racing by the France family in order to enrich themselves at the expense of the premier stock car racing teams that the fans come out to see and that the sponsors and broadcasters value. Okay. So that's what they're going after is a monopolization by NASCAR. Essentially, what 2311 Racing and Front Row Motorsports are stating here is that NASCAR controls premier stock car racing in the country. There are no other avenues for them to go down other than to adhere to the rules that NASCAR has laid out for them, forcing them to sign the charter agreement, forcing them to play by their rules. Now, the argument for NASCAR's case is going to be this is a privately held company, you know, that there are other options for you to go out there. You can race the cars tour, you can race something like that. There's also a bigger argument at stake here that 2311 Racing goes into. The lawsuit is claiming that the new charter agreement limits the competition by unfairly binding teams to NASCAR, essentially. What it comes down to is NASCAR controls majority of the racetracks in this country. Uh, it controls the suppliers. When you want to race in the Cup Series, you have to purchase your Gen 7 car from NASCAR. The parts, the single source supplied parts, have to be purchased by NASCAR approved suppliers at rates that NASCAR negotiates. So essentially, teams don't have any say over what the cost of this car is, and that's a big sticking point. NASCAR also wants to control driver IP and team IP and use that for marketing purposes uh, with their partners, and 2311 Racing and Front Row Motorsports are not happy about that either, which is understandable because if your face, image, and likeness, uh, as we've gone through in college football, is being used for profit, you should probably get a share of said uh, profit. The lawsuit states that, quote, the Franz family and NASCAR are monopolistic bullies and bullies will continue to impose their will to hurt others until their targets stand up and refuse to be victims. That moment has now arrived. We always knew that 2311 Racing was probably going to be the outspoken ones in the situation. Seeing front row tag on with them is certainly interesting. Obviously, 13 other teams did sign that charter agreement, and we learned a little bit more about that, um, signing period, which happened back in Atlanta at the start of the playoffs. NASCAR, according to what the AP reported, this is what the AP is saying, NASCAR sent teams the charter proposal, their final offer at 5 p.m. on that Friday. They said that you have an hour to review this 112-page document and sign it. Teams were like, an hour is not long enough. I mean, it's 112 pages. There's 60 minutes an hour. We're talking about what, like 1.8 pages a minute here that you're going to have to dissect everything that's on it. It's just not happening. So NASCAR pushed that deadline back to midnight. And they said, uh, if you don't sign, not only are you losing your charters, but they also threaten them with the risk of completely scrapping the entire charter system. And as we've heard from Rick Hendrick, essentially they just got worn down and tired and they just took what NASCAR was giving them because this had dragged on for two years. And hey, NASCAR, it, 
their prerogative. They can do their negotiating however they wanted. And this is what Jim France wanted, divide and conquer, eventually wear them down, get one team to sign and then more teams are going to sign. That type of approach, good old fashioned union busting, as we talked about here before. Again, that's fine. There's nothing to say that he can't do that. Teams wanted to walk together. They did until, well, 13 of them continued to walk together and two of them broke off to be like, you know what? We are not happy with what's happening over here. So those two teams retained Jeffrey Kessler, who is one of the nation's top antitrust lawyers. The RTA hired him to represent them earlier in this year in 2024. Now they are he's representing 2311 and front row in this fight against NASCAR. And if you're not familiar with Jeffrey Kessler's game, who he is, he's a big dog. That TikTok sound, I'm a big dog. I do big dog, you know, things. That's Jeffrey Kessler. Uh, he's he's responsible for a lot of things, including NFL free agency. If you ever heard of that, yeah, that's Jeffrey Kessler. Uh, equal pay for the U.S. women's national team. That's Jeffrey Kessler, which they absolutely deserve because they are exceptionally better and more fun to watch than the men's national team, which is mm, dog food. Uh, NIL in college athletics. Yeah, Jeffrey Kessler. His um his resume on his uh law firm website. Yeah, it reads like a it's a Hall of Fame resume for being completely honest. This guy has represented anybody and everybody. He represented uh, the Patriots and Deflategate, Tom Brady. He's represented Bill Belichick, uh, Stefan Marbury, like the the trail Sprewell, I believe the guy represents a lot of people. Um, He's successful in every single thing that he does. And he's very bullish on his opportunities to win in this fight against NASCAR. He told The Athletic that every sport goes through a transformation and that this is NASCAR's moment. Kessler was quoted on Wednesday during the media availability that he had uh, saying, quote, there has never been a case that I have found that is as egregiously anti-competitive as this one. Here we have a sport where one family has basically used its power to create an absolute monopoly for the benefit of that family. We expect to win this case in one way or another, Stock car racing is going to change in this country for the better. Yeah, Jeffrey Kessler is confident. I can't take that away from him. He's very confident something's going to change here. I'm not sure what is, though. So if this, what they are seeking here is a trial by jury, and they would also like a relevant discovery period with NASCAR as well as Jim France, the France uh, family. The problem here is the fact that 13 of those 15 teams sign. Now, Jeffrey Kessler... Uh, exceptionally more knowledgeable than me when it comes to antitrust. So what I'm saying likely does not matter in all of this. But I think that's a hurdle. You also throw in the fact that uh, premier stock car racing is uh, that is an interpretive word. What does premier mean? Um, You have late model stocks, you have, uh, you know, late model racing, those are all technically stock car racing. Now, there is a point that they did bring up in this filing where NASCAR acquired the Arca series back in 2018. And for me, when that happened in that moment, I probably even blogged about it at one point back then, uh, was, you know, this seems like it now creates a monopoly for NASCAR because before that NASCAR could always get around the talk of monopoly by being like Arca exists. You can go race Arca if you want to, because it was a premier stock car series. It toured nationally. Um, you know, it had a TV deal. It, 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 it existed. Now NASCAR owns Arca. So you can't really point to that to be like, hey, we're not a monopoly because there is another rival stock car series out here. Well, now they're under the same banner. So for a national premier stock car league, there isn't another option out there. So that is something that they are definitely going to argue and they, they should. Honestly, like if that, that's part of their case. NASCAR, on the other hand, is going to come back and be like, hey, there's nothing stopping you from starting your own series. You don't have to play by our rules. There are tracks out there that you can race at. Uh, you know, you don't have to use just our tracks. There are more tracks than, you know, the International Speedway Corporation tracks out there. Again, valid point, completely valid. How a jury sees that, though, is going to be interesting. Jeffrey Kessler also said in his media availability that he will seek, seek an injunction uh, that will allow 2311 Racing and Front Row Motorsports to compete in the 2025 season under the current charter deal, which will start uh, next year until this whole lawsuit is settled. It'll be interesting to see if they get that injunction. Uh, he did say that he anticipates both teams participating next year if they get that injunction or not. As more news was coming out on Wednesday morning, we there was a whole lot of news, honestly. I'm, I have posted a TikTok video about it, and it's going to have to be a two-parter because there's just so much information that came out. It really felt like the floodgates opened up here, and 
another interesting part of this was Curtis Polk was speaking as well. And he believes that teams get about 13% of overall revenue uh, in NASCAR. He estimates that drivers average $3 million. So he estimates $100 million total goes to drivers in a sport that generates $3 billion. So that $3 million is essentially paid by, uh, you know, the teams. Um, and now he's arguing that drivers are underpaid, which I would argue that majority of these drivers are underpaid for the amount of money that is coming into the sport. The teams are underpaid for the amount of money that is coming into the sport. It'll be interesting to see how a jury views it as well. Now, NASCAR is absolutely going to want to do everything in their power to make sure that this does not go to court, that they do not have to open up their books. They do not want people to know how much money they're making and where that money is going. Completely understand it. It's a private company. They don't want to do that. Um, no private company really wants people to know how much money they're making and where that money's going, especially for competitors, for broadcasters, for teams, for all the participants and people that are in that sport, um, company, whatever. They do not want that share. That's why the NFL never goes to court. It's why this will likely, I can see concessions being made here. Jeffrey Kessler says they're not settling for bread crumbs. He said if a settlement comes, you know, it has to be what they're looking for or they'll go to trial. Ah. Uh, I just don't see it going to a trial. And if it does, I think that's where things get a little bit more murky. Now, obviously, Jeffrey Kessler thinks that this is a slam dunk in a sense. And what changes come out of this? That's where I'm really interested to see how that goes. Uh, I don't know. I honestly don't know where it goes. I have some ideas on where it goes. I, I don't know confidently if that's the direction that it's going to head. But it could be that transformative moment for stock car racing what the future of stock car racing looks like beyond 2025 man i'm not sure what happens with these 13 other teams as well that have already signed up to race next year under the charter agreement not sure about that either um 2311 racing is standing on business as the kids say now we'll wait and see what's happening here same with uh bob jenkins over at front row bob jenkins uh long john silver's owner who eats long john silver's off the top of my head, I can't think of any. Uh, so if you do, let me know in the comments. But let me know what you guys think about what's happening here, about this lawsuit, what the direction is for NASCAR. I know a lot of people are happy about this. Um, NASCAR didn't want this to become a distraction. It has absolutely become a distraction. I don't love the fact that this is going to a legal battle. I'll be honest, like it sucks. Fans, unfortunately, are stuck in the middle here. And when NASCAR responds, I'll absolutely do a video talking about what NASCAR talked about here because I don't have a dog in this fight when it comes down to it. I just want to see competitive cars on track uh, racing. That's really what we care about. I want to see teams and drivers get paid what they're worth as well. Um, starting up a rival series is not what we need. Um, that's bad. That's bad for stock car racing overall. Uh, nobody wins in that situation. So we'll see how all of this plays out. So let me know in the comments what you think. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Break Hard